The road to smart energy economy is the work I'm doing. And as a long time energy entrepreneur, I really have to remember again and again that not all normal pe people are hardly fascinated by smart energy economy as I am. So probably I have been fascinated since I'm a schoolboy by solar power and for instance, or especially the political fight against nuclear power. And that made me study physics with the idea in my head to just tell them, learn and tell them and rationally convince people uh, to leave nuclear power and fossil power on the side. I had to learn a lot, especially that politics and rationality don't go together. Then I tried it as a campaigner for Greenpeace, doing direct action, bringing politicians and energy managers somehow a little bit into trouble. And that was fun, that hit headlines and even covers of newspapers. Uh, but somehow I came to the, uh, to the uh, decision the direct actions of the 21st century are not at the plant gates of nuclear power plants, or they are in the market. So the next step was to found a company for green power. That was Ökostrom AG, and I'll tell you a little bit more about this later. Uh, that really had an impact, but the road to solar economy to smart energy economy was still a long way. So now you know I am really interested in this stuff. Uh, what about you? Sometimes people get a little bit feeling lost with the idea of smart energy. What may, might this be? be? A little bit uh, like like in that common cartoon everybody hasn't probably always, uh, already seen, a cartoon with a guy lost in the desert, thirsty, really miserable, and then a real big billboard map, all white with a dot in the middle and an arrow, you are here. If you really feel a little bit like this, don't be afraid, I'm here to illustrate this map for you and to lead you back to the road you have lost. City 2.0 is really the best starting point for the issue of smart energy economy you can find. City 2.0 is the icon of the modern urban life we are looking for. And I think everybody is clear that we need a lot of energy to power the ideas of well-tempered, well-equipped with all kinds of amenities, houses, offices and everything, efficient industries, public transports, underground streetcars running on electricity, on easy... What is this? Same problem. My teleprompter is running away. Sorry. <laughs> and I'm, I'm sure every one of you has, like me, in mind, this energy, this easy to use energy, will come from solar power, from wind powers on the rooftops of the modern buildings, from maybe co generation units in the basement. Uh, maybe even storage batteries in the basement to make these buildings autonomous and independent from real big blackout that may happen. And the funny thing is, this com common image of an interconnected system of small renewable powered units was already drawn in the 70s by the visionary Amory Lovins, American physicist, in his book 
and I have a picture of it, the soft energy path. And Emery Levins and all his followers, scientists, they not only proved that a 100% renewable energy system is feasible, but also that it is cheaper for the society as a whole, as for every individual household or business uh, working with it. But if it is so, if it's really cheaper, why are most of us still hooked to energy companies operating fossil or nuclear power plants? Why are people like Emory Lovins or energy freaks like me still running around preaching the obvious? It's a simple reason. And this is the dark, the mountain stage of the road to smart energy economy. First, I call it the question of power is the question of power. The question is influence and big business. Or from another side, from another aspect scene, it's the triple hardware problem of the incumbency. The first hardware a uh, problem is the big investment in power plants, in real big continental grids, in pipeline systems, and in inter intercontinental logistics of fossil fuels, and so on. The second hardware problem is the hardware of the organizations, the organizational hardware. Uh, corporations, hierarchies, uh, departments, financial uh, structures, education and learning structures, and all this too, the physical hardware plus the organizational hardware is directed in only one direction, unidirectional flow of energy from big units down to consumers, to passive consumers, only consumers. And the third hardware problem is the individual hardware problem. I call it the brain hardware problem. Individuals working and being trained in concepts of hierarchical conventional energy systems learning on the brain level means building out synapses connections on the hardware level to ease the thinking of the thoughts on concepts you have been trained on. And that is a little bit a problem to do some kind of innovative thinking, uh, thinking. But the good news is people can change and markets can change, and they do. These incumbent experts, they tell us we have to wait for new technical development, we have to invest in, in research. They are dreaming of the ultimate cheap energy source to be invented next year's on 10. They are mumbling the mantra of technological innovation to come. But that is not the case. The thing we need is to redefine the services and benefits of the energy industry. We have to reshuffle the mechanisms they earn money the mechanisms how energy companies produce useful things, utility for their customers, how they improve lives, how they create utility. And speaking of utility, I mean, this isn't it the mega bogus of a wordplay we have? A whole industry calls itself utility. And they, uh, they produce use, uh, uh, useless things like climate change, nuclear risk, and blockades to innovation. I mean, luckily, people, companies, and markets are moving. The technology is there, the business models, the me mechanism to, to uh, deliver utility to the customers, are to be inno innovated. Now you may ask, what may a business model innovation without 
technical innovation be like? And this is one of my personal stories. A beautiful animal in the market, green power company Ökostrom, which I helped to create and manage for a couple of years, is the prototype of business model innovation without technical innovation. In 1999, when I, together with a couple of friends, founded uh, the company Ökostrom AG, as did a couple of other folks in other countries, in Germany, in uh, the Netherlands, there was no such thing as green electricity. Incumbent experts and even university people told us, you can't take elect electricity. Or as uh, the Austrians say, Strom hat kein Marshall. Electricity has no bow. And so even when the customers said, oh yeah, we would like to buy green electricity even for a premium price, people in the incumbency said, physically impossible, just forget it. The wonderful thing, it worked. Today, green electricity is really flush, uh, flourishing all over Europe. In Germany, just uh, two or three weeks, weeks ago, in the newspapers, five million households have switched to green electricity, and it worked. And it stirred the construction of new wind farms, and it changed the energy laws. You have to disclose the origin of your electricity as uh, you uh, supply customers everywhere in Europe. And in Austria, as a forerunner, starting with 2015, there may not be delivered any kilowatt hour without a tag on. And that's what I call a victory. I mean, even the biggest utilities or power companies sell green electricity, plus, in Austria at least, at first, no electricity without a tech, without a marshal, will be sold. That's a victory. But, so you understand, understand my excitement to move markets just by business model innovation. But uh, the next step to the smart energy, where are the next fancy fishes? And I tell you, these fin fancy fishes are already swimming around. Sharks don't de see them, the big ones. New aspects of usability of the energy systems are already prepared by companies. For instance, one of my most beloved uh, fields is smart metering. It's a big discussion in the industry at the moment because the incumbents say, why would, would we cha change meters? For more than 100 years, we count electricity with a simple counter, which is weighed once a year, and that is enough for billing purpose. Yes, for billing purpose, that may be enough, but customers want more. Customers want information. and. With modern electronic meters, you can, you know, what kind of appliance is the big guzzler in your home or shop or industry. You can have the information what kind of energy you are using. You have the information to be responsible for what you, uh, your appliance, your household needs. And still, the experts say, we don't need it, we have to opt out. I mean. A house with a normal electricity counter that's like a car with only a mileage counter. No speedometer, no tachometer, no fuelage gauge. Would you drive a car like this? Even modern cars, they have uh, already uh, um, fuel consumption meters that tell you how much fuel you're just in this moment uh, burning. And that makes a car more safe, responsible, and useful. So usability is this thing we, we need. What else as the next wonderful fish in this, uh, I mean, the m most colorful uh, species? There are companies around, they are 
installing, investing and operating in PV systems and uh, storage systems in the site of the households or small businesses. And they don't sell electricity, they sell autonomy, they sell self supply to the people. They operate the swarm of hundreds of PV systems and storage systems and just optimizing the self-consumption, the autonomy of uh, their customers. One of these companies is called Puzzle Power for obvious reasons. So there are many of them and uh, the usability will be in the center of the development. Today, grid operators are still quite restrictive concerning the permission of kind of meters you install or kind of uh, uh, production units you install. But the future will be a grid to exchange power and services on a peer-to-peer -peer level or together with companies specialized on this, on this kind of companies, of grid operator companies. They realize, they, they develop the Internet of Energy, and these companies I'm prepared to call utility again. All these and others are big companies uh, on the wrong side. So we come to the end of the road. And to see the whole image, I have to ask you to sh shut your eyes and imagine a coral reef. Coral reefs are a big opportunity for bi biodiversity. A multitude of species, hundreds of species, each speci specialized on a special niche in the biosystem, each with an individual capacity exploring tiny resource streams and producing utility for the whole system. The coral reef is the all symbiotic system, the share economy, and without this share economy, it would not be possible to survive in a low resource system coral reefs are found in. Coral reefs exist in the cleanest of all water. That means virtually no nutrient content in the water. So they have to be based on share economy. The coral reef is the energy economy visual you have to keep in mind. Keep that in mind and spread the message, the idea of business model innovations to prepare the road to smart energy economy. Thanks for listening.